Now on the last tape, we had started working on a wing. We made a little bit of progress in the last couple of days. I've started laying out the ink on the bottom, tried to decide, and I've gone back and forth about six times, adding lines, taking lines away, making the landing gear doors, taking them away, trying to look at the drawings that we have, the pictures, just like the fuselage, adding rivets, taking things away. But I finally got to the point where maybe I'm ready to start uh, flipping it over to do the top. One of the resources I used was I constantly referred back to both of the original bombers because I really thought that I had a good balance of ink from the fuselage to the wing and in the transition places. So I wanted to take advantage of that because I thought, well, if we got it to where I'm happy with it at that level, well, maybe I'll be happy with it if I can just get the same amount of detailing onto the Tiger Cat. So going back and forth, I've always tried to look back and forth, back and forth, and try to make the decision accordingly, not to add too much, being very careful not to get too carried away. It's like something you could sell to somebody for modern art. Maybe I should frame this. But that's how many times you're jinking around with the pen. I've taken advantage of the fact that I have pretty good line drawing of what I wanted. And of course, always doing the bottom first. Now the thing that gets tricky and that I've done over and over again, about four times already, is getting the right amount on the fuselage. These are, this is a little hatch that goes off. And on the nacelle, so it kind of looks like it belongs, like it's supposed to be there. And I wanted to add some riveting, just because I don't have any riveting on the wing except for these two little spots. So the next step on this was I, and I had cleaned this off. I had done the gear doors over. Actually, it was a little embarrassing how many times I've done a lot of this stuff over, but I thought, well, if my plan goes, and my plan never goes as, as planned, I'll be looking at this ink job for uh, hopefully the rest of my life if all goes well for some long amount of time. So it really, for me, it pays to really put the time and energy and to get this to where I'm really happy with it. And I'm not, I'm not doing it in terms of hours, minutes. I'm doing it, I just want it. And at the end of this job, I want to have it as good as I can possibly make it. I like the way that the changing ink colors go through the word Marines. I was happy with the transition through the hatches. See what the transition line does, it kind of disguises the hatches. The gear doors, we really can't make them scale because the nacelles aren't scale. Now the next thing I have to lay out is some of the detailing on the nacelles itself. I thought I'd add some riveting line to the wing. And I need to start looking at some of the pictures and drawings and getting some ideas how I want to detail those scoops and where I want to add some rivets to this. Now it's been, my God, it's been since the last snowstorm that I've been working on this. And actually, these, the decisions that I've made so far, I, I eliminated some of the stripes here because I just thought that's, even though that's scale, if this were a scale plane, I would have done that. But I thought, you know, this isn't a scale plane, and that just didn't look right to me that I had this amount. When you balanced it, I went, I went, just didn't go for that. Now, the same thing on a wing is I have exactly scale on the panels, but up over the nacelles, we varied it some. And that's perfectly okay because, again, the good thing, it's not a scale model. We laid out those gear doors several times again and all these transitions. See, this is where it gets tricky. What happens is where, where the lines connect, the transition lines from the fuselage to the wing, that kind of connects it. When you have all the lines on the wing and all the lines on the body and none of them connect, it, there's a there's something that just doesn't look right. And so when we're done with this part of it, the last step, just like it was the last step on the last video, is to put the whole plane together, or put parts of it together, and see that they match up right. See, this is really important. And it's scale. That's how the scale plane is made. But, but those lines really have to match. And that's really something that I was determined right in the beginning that that was going to get to be one of the focal points. I know that Another thing too, when you look down the wing, these lines have to line up. And if they don't line up, except for this one up here that has an angle to it, well, you, you can spot it real quick. 
and you spot it even faster on white ink. I think the white ink just, it allows you to see things that, little errors that you probably wouldn't see if it was a white plane with black ink. So having said all that, I'm going to get out the pens, finish the coffee and get busy. One little tip, and it so almost sounds like this would be self-evident, but it isn't. The white ink seems to evaporate or dry a lot quicker than the black, and I mean a lot quicker. So what I found as being a problem, and I think I've got a reasonable cure for it, is I do all my little testing on a piece of paper. But now if I have to lay out another ink line or I have to sit and make a decision, what I do is put the cap back on the pen. Then. 10, 15 minutes later, when I go to use it, it seems like I can just go and put a line down. Or in the worst of all worlds, I give it a couple of taps and it's ready to go. The problem has been, when I've left it like this, two things have happened. First of all, the bird knocked it on the floor, took one of the pens and bent the tip. Once it's bent, pen, you throw the pen away. So it does two things. It protects the pen from even myself or who knows who, knocking it over. Would not, never say anybody in my shop would knock anything over. Or, and the second thing is it just keeps the ink flowing a lot better, white ink especially, even a lot more than black. So that's one of the things we've really learned in the course of doing this ink job, is whenever we're done, just takes a second, put the cap back on, and when you're ready to use it, after you've laid out or decided on the next ink line, look at this, I gotta get the phone. Leave the cap on. One of the things that I, I learned that I think I can pass on now, when you're doing a rivet, uh, an operation where you think you might want fewer or more rivets, the easier of two things, and the fuselage taught me this lesson real, really very quickly, it's easier to put in every other rivet, then go back later, move the rule of one rivet, and put in the other rivets. It's a lot easier doing that than taking out with a Q-tip. So I used about two boxes of Q-tips taking out those extra rivets. Now I have dots forward and reverse here, so I know exactly where this ruler should be, to be at the size I want. But that was a hard lesson to learn, and I, I really should have thought that through. But that's the kind of thing you can pick up off a of video. You can watch somebody else make a mistake or do something the hard way, and then hopefully come up with a solution. You know, this pen, as I, as I speak about pens becoming teenagers, this one has just become a 16-year-old. I'm glad you're seeing this on tape so you don't think Wendy had it so easy. There we go. It just seems like white ink is a lot, a lot more volatile. And I've tried all four of those brands of white ink, and you know what? They're all the same. There isn't an appreciable difference in any of them. You know what, the pen might be out of ink. I just thought of something. Maybe I can get through here. But it's really a good idea to just keep the cap on at all times. That is such a good investment. Surprised I didn't think of that before. Again, I'm being real critical about not getting it too busy. a good tip too no matter what brand of ink you use you really got to shake this ink the pigment or whatever they use to pigment this ink it goes right to the bottom in a matter of minutes and it turns to like a white powder too anyway whatever I do whenever I do this and, and it's always messy there's just no way you can I guess unless you're a, a professional or something. But what I've learned to do also is as soon as I'm done with this, put on a pair of a new pair of gloves. Because this just makes a mess. But in the end, let me put this over there. In the end, this is the only way I know of to keep these pens going. And they only have to go for another couple of days and I'll be done with this ink work. And then I'm gonna I am, and I promise you, I am gonna clean these pens this time. I'm gonna store them, I'm gonna clean them. Take them apart, clean them with Windex, whatever. There we go. Oh, boy. White ink is just, just, 
It's teenage. It makes it turns pens into teenagers. And what I tried to do is I tried to incorporate some of the smaller diameter rivets to give this some variety so this doesn't start to look like uh, what Karen calls Edward Scissorhands where everything looks the same. I'm not sure where that came from but that's her saying. And this will give us a different size rivet and a different spacing all at the same time. I wanted to, my goal was here today is to finish the bottom. And hopefully, uh, well, we'll see whether it's going to be uh, practical to finish this tonight. I don't want to rush it, but I would like to get the bottom done. And sometimes just making these decisions, and these pens have gotten to be a little bit of a, uh, I call them teenagers. Now, now this is the, the part that, thank God, you can take ink off if you don't like the way it looks. Because to make that template would be rather uh, time-consuming and difficult. And yet, it's not unreasonable to just eyeball each one up. Now, what allows you to do this is the fact that if you don't like the way it looks, you can just undo it. Don't you wish there were other things in life, if you didn't like them, you could just undo them like having a Baltimore Oriole in your shop Chicky oh, this is just takes a little bit of practice now it's gonna be difficult getting the other ones I'm gonna have to figure some way of hanging a wing up by a or putting paper towels under it or something We'll see if we can figure something out. But it gives you a variety, and, and it's so important to have a variety that they don't all look the same diameter, the same spacing. That, that adds so much realism, and when you can make them that, that even the lines are a different thickness, because your eye then is always focusing in and out. Now the final thing here, before I go on to doing a bunch of them, is to see that the two of them are symmetrical and that I'm happy with the spacing and the diameter because we're going to be putting some exhaust staining in there of course so I'm I'm wondering how that's that's gonna play out well I guess we're gonna find out because once we finish the ink then we can just dust in some just some of the uh, exhaust staining and we have mixed up some some of the proper color paint just to see what that's gonna look like so what I look at doing here is figuring somehow, I guess I gotta boost this up, somehow paper towel it up and go around the other the other parts that uh, so it is symmetrical. One of the things I wanted to do is all the ink lines that end and go around into a hatch, I want to carry them around about an eighth of an inch or so. Reason is when you look down, I don't want to see that ink line end. A little detail of Maybe nobody will even notice it. I think we're going to finish up this bottom. And that's all we're going to do today. But here's the, here's the other thing. I'm going to look at this because I have some photos. I don't like the way that looks. I'm not happy. But again, when you're not happy, real easy to get rid of it. I'm just going to look for something a little more prototypical. See if I can find something. I have some documentation and we'll see what we can come up with at the end of the day when I'm done. Any part of it you're not happy with? Simple. Q-tips, take a wet Q-tip with Windex, wipe it right off. Well, I tried several different ways to detail out these exhaust outlets. I wasn't really happy with any of them. I spent the rest of the day just backtracking and trying to figure out what I'm going to do, but What's always the best to do is if you can't decide if you like it or not, sleep on it. And that's what we're going to do now. Come back tomorrow nice and fresh. Flip it over and do the top. 
Now this morning I wanted, I looked at all my ink lines and to go any further here what I have to do is get out the book and see what some of the Zeus fittings and detailing around the cowls look like just to get some ideas of course but I realized I never I never wet sanded out the uh, the cowls so the first thing I'm going to have to do is before I do any inking on these of course is just just scuff them up doesn't, doesn't we're not looking to remove material just like the rest of the plane scuff them up and talcum powder them down I changed the ink lines around the uh, the cowl areas a couple of times already because I wasn't real satisfied and because they're not really the totally prototypical shape the prototypical ink lines aren't really appropriate there but this way has worked pretty well for me is just scuff everything up just needs the slightest scuffing it doesn't need to even be well sanded if the M600 hopefully gets off most of the contamination and whatever it doesn't the talcum powder does and I figure what I would do today is if I would try to detail out the cowlings because I need the cowlings to match this up to see if I want to do any more ink lining on the bottom before I flip this over to do the top. Now the bottom and the top, on, on not on most planes, on all planes, are not exactly the same. The nacelles force the ink lines to be different. So we can be a little more creative on the top and then I want to put the, when I get the top done, I want to put the whole plane together and look at it and see if there's any areas I need to add some or if it looks too busy I can take some away. I just tried laying out some of these lines just to see how I'd like it. But from this point on, it'll be easier just to take the cowl off and work on it. But I wanted to get all these lines in alignment. And I'll do one, see how I like it, and if I do like it, of course, then I'll just do the other one. You really need the cowl in place because you got to be able to see. Now, an example in here is going to be our exhaust stain, so I don't want to busy that up too much. And these lines are relatively prototypical from how the cowl is from the top and bottom. But anyway, we can improvise a little bit just to make it look more like what we have in the, in the back of our mind here. The things, one of the more difficult lines to make is a line around something round. So what I did, I, I've got the wide tape on this, my little template. And you really can't, I can't do it all at once. I did it in three spots and then I have to take a, a brand new blade and where they join, just make the joint invisible. Now what I did, I lined up all my other lines with dots, so now I can get the, the lines that are going to go front to back on the cowl. And if you look at the real plane, there's a distinct set of rivets. I'm going to try to get them spaced so they kind of scale to the real plane. The advantage of having this is you, you always want to be inking this way. It's hard to ink sideways. So if you can take the plane and somehow rotate it, say if you had one of those finishing friend things, this would be a great time to have it. Now when I get all the lines the way I think they're going to be the, the most prototypical, then I'm going to lay out the rivets. And I may have to make a separate rivet template for that spacing. I don't, don't really know because they're, they're not they're not closely spaced like they are in the rest of the plane, out on the cowl. And I'm sure in real life there's Zeus fittings because these cowl pieces come apart. I'll make sure all the lines that I do, that I carried them over, a certain amount, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. This makes it look better in the final product, I think, when these are attached together. Now I'll have all the time of doing the second one, 
to make a decision if I really uh, am satisfied with this or if I need to add more, take more away. We got various spacings and that's prototypical. The back ones are spaced further than the front ones, but not of course exactly scale. So I'll have, I'll have a cup of coffee, think about this, and then repeat everything out onto the, uh, the other cowl, and then I can sit back and look at both of them. And I didn't realize last night I needed to do this part of it before I could flip this over. See, the, uh, the Zeus fittings in the back are spaced further apart than the front one, so that gives us a little bit of a, a, little bit of a prototypical look. Now I added the access hatches that seem to be relatively scale, not exactly of course. And finally after looking at this for a whole afternoon, I think I'm as close to having what I want as, as practical. So it actually is the time I'm waiting for, and I've been waiting for for a long time, to flip this over. Now the hard part is going to be lining up all these lines. These lines, when you look from the front of the plane, they can't be off. Even if I have to redo the whole line, but they cannot be off. Now some of them, like this one, we have a pattern for, so we hope we can get that real accurate. And again, the top, the ink lining on the top is just a little bit different, not totally different, but there are some differences in the hatches and some of the wing folding uh, little parts. Now I'm trying to look at what this is gonna look like with the exhaust stains. I have some rust colored paint left over from the A26 and I'm just picturing what that's going to look like and possibly with some shading, a little bit of shading or a lot of shading. But I think it's time to just flip it over and get started. Because this side of the plane is loaded with fingerprints, I'm going to just not even take a chance before I even start and buff it with talc. There's just, there's just no future because I've been picking this up from the bottom. And even with rubber gloves, you wind up getting fingerprints on it. Now what I did by looking at all these pictures that I've been looking at, I've been trying to figure out, you know, there's some other little details I may or may not want to put on here. After I have all the inking done and I'm at that point, I'm not going to take the ink out of the pens because after we put the first couple of coats of clear on, then I'll want to touch up any place I sand through an ink line or maybe if I look at it and say, geez, that just doesn't look right, I need to add one or take one away. It's an endless like a palette for an artist until you actually have all that final clear on. And I guess to a certain degree, even then, you could run back and change it. But the first thing is going to be, after this is all cleaned up, is to mark off with some tape where some of these lines line up. Because if these lines, and I've seen even on, even on the Typhoon, I know I had to do the lines 10 times before I looked at from the front and I saw them line right up. That is any line that either connects two things or any line that, that in essence goes around the surface is the most difficult, they're the most difficult ones to do. And so sometimes you have to do them over and over again. Not a deal breaker, but those are the ones that if somebody were judging, and they want to see if you're really uh, at the top level of your game to look at those front lines and some of the lines and some of the rivet lines and when they start to not line up it just looks sloppy. Now I realized before I flipped this over I had some lines I had to connect. The lines in the back now one of the things that I think disguises the hatches and the take apart features is when you can run a line or a row of rivets right through the hatch and to do that you know it's it's a little more work than it normally would be but I have to have the hatch bolted in place or at least held in place because these lines I want to connect I want to have a line that goes right through so it takes your eye off the fact that we have that hatch there and I guess once I finish that, I gotta take the support to do it. Once I finish that, again, I keep saying I'm gonna flip this over and it looks like I'm never gonna flip it over. It looks like I'm, uh, <laughs> like I lied. But I really do wanna get the bottom finished as much as I can before I flip this over. That's one of my, uh, 
my little goals is to have the bottom done and be happy with it before I flip. So far, I'm not there. Okay, it's finally on its <laughs> right side up. Now, the first thing I have to do, I have to make a couple of templates up. See, what will happen if I put a straight line here? Eh, it's going to look like it, like I took the cheap way out. Somehow, the cheap way out. Anyway, but what I think will work, I think one of the things will work real well, if I make a template with this curve, because one of these defining features I love is how thin that body gets right up over the top of the wing. It actually gets thinner right at the high point. So what I want to do, I want to use the Ed Cotton method, make a pattern for this, and then I'll cut it out of styrene, and I'll have a template to do that ink line on both sides. And I probably will need to make some kind of a template here, so I may as well go get the styrene. Yeah, that's going to be a defining line. That's one I don't want to leave out, or I don't want to take the cheap trolley way out. And then we'll see if we want to connect some of these lines to that line, or how we want to end these lines. That's always a critical thing. But this is the kind of thing, sometimes you have to think about it, you have to do it two or three times. It isn't just... Uh, you know, take out the take out the template and go. And in fact, once we make this template, this will be a permanent template then. Now this is the method Ed Cotton had pretty much showed us. So just to make a template of this, and it can be a rough template for right now, we can fine tune it. That'll pretty much give us that angle. Make this template. I'll just go over. I've used a piece of tape for an edge. And we can take a sanding block and adjust this if it's not exactly what we want. And since it's going to be about a quarter of an inch away from the wing, it really doesn't have to be within thousands. But that, we probably have to make one for each side. If it's thin like this, you really have to cut it. Ed Cotton really, really, uh, when we were doing the A26, boy, I remember on a B25, I made these same things out of uh, 64th plywood or something, and this is so much easier. You can make a template for a dedicated ink line. Now, in this case, We can get a nice smooth edge, put the tape on it so it sits up off of the wing, and we should be able to, well, if we're lucky, we'll be able to use it for both sides with very little adjustment. Now what we have to do is move the tape back so the ink can't run underneath it, and I'll do both sides. Now we've got it very close on the first shot. So all that's left is a smooth edge. Get a smooth edge on this and get that tape back. We'll be ready to put an ink line right on there. And what I'm going to do is work from this ink line out. I can't run all these lines in here and not know how I'm going to connect them to the fuselage. So I figure may as well get this out of the way first. Even on the full-size plane, that is a dedicated ink line. <laughs> 